friends! This week, I'm going to be trying this DIY eraser kit by Mariah Elizabeth. Apparently, it's clay that you bake and it becomes an eraser. Before I got this kit, I didn't even know eraser clay was a thing, but there are quite a few other kits out there. Inside this kit, there are eight colors of clay, three clay tools, three pencils, and baking directions. I've never actually sculpted anything with clay before, so while I was trying to decide what to make, I unwrapped all of the clay. The color choices are kind of surprising. There's green and yellow, and then a greenish yellow. There's orange, red, and blue, but no purple. Okay, I'm done stalling. I finally have an idea. I'm going to put down some wax paper to keep it from sticking and start with this green. When you first start working with this clay, it's really crumbly, but the more you work with it and it heats up, it gets softer and easier to work with without breaking it. After getting about half the little clay brick warmed up, I started working on crafting a little dinosaur. I made a round ball for the body, four little cone shapes for the feet, and a little longer cone shape for the tail. I put the feet and the tail on, and he looks like a tadpole. So I tried again. This time I made his tail a little bit longer. I spent more time making his feet fit more neatly. I used one of the tools to smooth down the area underneath him where all his legs meet. Then I made some small triangles out of the blue clay to add spikes down his back and tail. I tried both the clay tool and a dull pencil to try to smooth out the joints before I finally used a small detail brush. I'm not sure what real eraser sculptors used to work in such small spaces, but I had a paintbrush close to me and it worked pretty well. I used the pencil to poke in two small holes and added small balls of black clay for the eyes. I kept overestimating how much clay I needed and having to make the eyes smaller. I used a toothpick to draw on a little mouth and nostrils, and then used a very, very, very tiny amount of pink clay to give him rosy cheeks. And there's one eraser done. Next, I warmed up some blue clay and made a little egg shape. I rolled out a tube and cut it into smaller pieces, and then shaped them into little cylinders. Then I attached them to the egg as legs. I made a couple of round, flat ears, a long trunk, and a little blue tail. I added on a couple of white cones for tusks and two tiny black eyes. And there's a cute little elephant ready for some baking. Before I bake these, I wanted to make just one more. So this time I'm starting with the black clay. And I just need to say I hated this black clay. It stained everything it touched, including my hands. So again, we're going with an egg-shaped body, and I made two flat oval shapes for wings. Then I went to work with some white clay and turned it a disgusting gray. Now with clean hands, let's try that again. I added a white circle for the belly. Next, I added an orange teardrop for a beak and two larger orange teardrops for the feet. Last, he gets a couple of very wide eyes. I put them into the oven at 250 degrees for 30 minutes, and then I let them cool down completely. They all seem to have come out unscathed, with no cracks or anything. The penguin's feet came out a little misshapen, but everything seems to be attached well and it held its shape. The bottom of the elephant's feet are also a little denty, but that's probably my fault for baking them on foil instead of directly on a baking sheet. Also, there's a tiny little mark under his trunk where I propped it up with a toothpick during baking, but it was worth it because his trunk is still curved up and I think it's really cute that way. The dinosaur is my favorite. He's so cute and everything stayed right where I put it. Because the penguin gave me the most trouble with that black clay, he's my least favorite. So he's the one that got nominated to be tested as an eraser. And it works. Now no one may ever use them ever again. I should have stopped here. Let's end on a win, right? Nope. I had so much clay left over and I saw this really neat peacock that I just had to try. Go big or go home, right? I should have just gone home. I decided this time to warm up all the clay first and it was a lot of clay. It took me almost an hour just to work all the clay before I even started sculpting the peacock. I started with a round ball for the body and some long snake shapes to build the feathers. Then I went to roll it out to mesh them together and made my first bonehead mistake. I decided to use a marker as a rolling pin, forgetting that it has a little protrusion on the cap and made marks all over. I tried to fix it with a pencil, but eventually I just gave up and turned it over. I cut across the bottom to make it even and then I used a tongue depressor to make these little lines for the feathers. Okay, looking good, gaining more confidence. We'll add on his body and a beak, some wings, get fancy with a little texture, and then some feet. 
Next, I was about to try something real fancy on the feathers with some balls of clay. And since some of it was black, I decided to get all of it ready and wash my hands before I ever added it to the main body. I followed directions to make this, but I had to alter the colors based on what clay I had left. And at this point, I think the colors of his frill thing make him look more like a turkey than a peacock. I don't know if this little embellishment helps or not, but it was in the directions, so I did it. Last, he got a fat tail on the back to help him stand up. Off camera, I also added another piece of yellow clay between his feet to help stabilize him. Remember that for later. I had a ton of clay still left over, and by this time I was really tired of sculpting, and I just wanted to get rid of it. So I used the red, yellow, and orange to make three balls. I used the leftover black and white to make the ugliest gray ball, and then I took them all to the oven. Remember how I said I spent all that time stabilizing the peacock? This is how he came out. He fell over onto that ugly gray ball, so even his feather frill thing has a weird lump in it. Now he has a giant yellow butthole and seriously deformed feet. Plus he still sort of looks like a turkey. I tried to see if I could rip his back end off, but nope, that's on there pretty good. Here I just tried to cover his feet up and admire the rest of him. The volcano balls came out nice and I'll probably actually use them. This black and white thing is still ugly. So that's it. I really do like the first three erasers I made and the clay does seem like pretty good quality. Although, since I didn't even know it existed, I'm probably not the best judge of that, but at least it did exactly what it was supposed to do. I may eventually try eraser clay again, but first I have to get past the trauma that Peacock caused. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle, and don't forget to subscribe to see what ridiculous things I try in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.